Let us now look at the idea of matrix multiplication. Let's write a Python program to do this. Uh, please note that there are many library functions available where matrix related operations can be done very easily but then we are going to do it by first principles. Let me write that down. Matrix addition by first principles. So what do you mean by first principles? By first principles you mean you go to your kitchen and you start cooking and you see that your raw materials are not there, your ingredients are not there and what you do is you don't go to your shop and then buy them. You start growing them in your garden. <laughs> okay, that's what you mean by first principles. The point is to make your life hell by trying to do everything from your hand. And you know, you probably are wondering why should we do that? As I've been telling you people, that is how you learn. You you learn by doing things that are not ready-made, but then creating things to whatever extent possible. Okay. All right. So let us now go ahead and then try to write a piece of code for matrix addition as and always we are going to use some bare minimum uh, python uh, ideas but then not use a lot of library functions so what i will do is please note as as i proceed you will understand how i um, what I, 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 how i represent a matrix and how i ma do addition onto matrices okay remember how we started this week we started with lists we started with lists of lists. I'm going to make use of that idea. Bear with me, things will become very easy and um, easy on your mind very soon as you note as I'm typing. So I, 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 I especially like typing as I think. I, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't generally come prepared with the ideas. That's because if I come prepared, I stay a lot away from your level. Uh, you see, I mean, you cannot reach my level if I come very well prepared and try to write a very optimized code and things like that. So what I keep in my mind is I am you trying to learn programming from the beginning, from scratch, not knowing anything. Okay, so enough of my cacophony. I'll start uh, typing the code now. Let me say R1 is the first row of my matrix. Let that be 1, 2, 3. R2 is, let's say, um, 4, 5, and 6 some matrix of your choice okay and then seven eight nine this will be my matrix a right okay good so and then another matrix with three rows let's say one two one and let's say second row will be six two three in a minute you'll understand what i'm doing don't worry four two one and a will be my matrix it will be an array I'll append R1 to this. I'll append R2 to this. I will append R3 to this. Okay. Some of you should be wondering why are you doing this circus of appending them? Why can't you just directly go and create a matrix? I want it to be easy on your mind. I'm going very slowly line by line. All right. So again, create another array and then append s1 append s2 and append s3 and let me see how a and b looks like let me first see a i'm executing this i see a as this a list of lists okay and then my b is as expected one to one one to one six to three six to three and so on so now i need to add these two matrices I need to add A and B. So what I should now do is, firstly, I should understand the dimension of these matrices. The dimension of these matrices, I will call it as three. For the time being, I'm only assuming I'm taking square matrices, where the number of rows is same as number of columns, and they're just, the size is three, all right? Okay, so, and then now what I'll go ahead and do is create a new matrix C, which contains all zeros okay how do i do that that's very easy i'll do it like this 0 comma 0 comma 0 and then 0 comma 0 comma 0 and then 0 comma 0 comma 0 now what i'll do is my c will be the answer how for i in range dim which is dimension which is 3 here I call it I could have put 3 itself here but then it's always useful to simply put dim here and then change it when your matrix is bigger 
than change it everywhere you, you'll understand in a minute for j in range dim i do c of i of j is equal to a of i of j plus b of i of j okay a i j b i j when you add that you get c i j as simple as that pretty simple and then i'll go ahead and then print c now and then explain in detail there are a lot of things that i'm going to explain now after executing this i observe there is a problem it says there is no array called c that's because i made a mistake here you see i should have put z equal to here and now i say execute i get c here as you can see i'll scroll up c is indeed 1 2 3 plus 1 2 1 1 plus 1 is 2 2 plus 2 is 4 3 plus 1 is 4 4 plus 6 is 10 5 plus 2 is 7 6 plus 3 is 9 and so on very good all right so you see why should i do this what if i don't do this and simply initialize c as a simple array of uh, let's say three entries okay python doesn't know how to handle it all right uh, there's a reason for it <laughs> the reason is that it doesn't know what you mean by c of 0 comma 0 there's nothing here how are you able to assign something to it so of course it can be intelligent enough to initialize it to 0 but python for various reasons doesn't do it and this is when you should understand programming languages independently has they have their own sort of a startup brain you know you should understand that this is the bare minimum that the python does on top of it you must use your intelligence logic and then code okay so this is not acceptable python is not smart enough to figure out it should initialize it to zero so use put zeros there and then do the addition like this in fact as you would have noted this entire thing can also become a part of a code just so that you can you know automate it this very assignment of zero can be done programmatically okay try doing that i'll not do it for you you should figure out how to do it now you did this for three dimension what if you want to do it for four dimension change this to four and add more numbers here let's say i'll add more numbers here uh, let's say 14 here and then maybe two here and then 16 15 here and maybe 45 here whatever whatever and as you can see i am um, appending so this may require another row so i'll say r4 is equal to some one one two two so I, i'm trying to write a four cross four matrix you see and then one seven two nine uh, and then i may have to append this as well here you see a lot of effort here correct in changing everything you may want to think if this can be automated right so I, I print a and b and then c again should be one more row and a four cross four with entry zero so i leave it to you to tell me how you can automate all these things and not make it such a big story of manually doing everything all right i leave it to you as homework there and then pretty much we have done it let me see whether this gives me the answer this is indeed giving me the answer 7 plus 15 is 22 so on and so forth all right so now what i'll do is i'll come comfortably come here and then put a into here and this results in this results in matrix multiplication 1 into 1 is 1 2 into 2 is 4 3 into 1 is 3 4 into 2 is 8 and so on and so forth and i know all of you have your eyebrows up thinking oh my goodness our instructor doesn't know what is matrix multiplication right yes <laughs> i really don't know why we cannot multiply matrices like this just the way we add isn't it life would have been easier if matrix multiplication was simply component wise multiplication just the way we add two matrices but why on earth is matrix multiplication different why is it different from you know the usual multiplication right so you may want to know that that probably is the crux if there is one nucleus for your data sciences uh, program uh, bsc in data sciences it is in fact the idea of matrices and in matrices a very elegant idea is indeed matrix multiplication and, and why do we multiply the row with column and then put one value there in fact we take dot products you see to multiply matrices we don't multiply like this do we we don't that's not how it was taught in our high schools why do we multiply like that okay food for thought for all of you think
think about it there's a lot of online references for you anyways the motive of the course is not to teach matrices but to tell you how to meddle with matrices so what i'll do right now is i will go ahead and write a piece of code to multiply two matrices i hope you liked the code to add two matrices the naive way the first principles way the long way the you know the sort of a, a very very what i mean uh, unintelligent uh, way of writing a code because most of these things can be automated i leave it to you to automate in fact in the forthcoming weeks will be taking all this code and trying to write better code out of them by using better ideas in python